All right, back with Greenland, turn three. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and flip over the event card and see what we gotta deal with this turn. That's the Maunder minimum. Oh, wow. So no sunspot activity. And then global, so they're saying it's tied to maybe perhaps a global warming with no sunspot activity. Interesting. Uh, but these three icons, the first one is a global cooling event. So what we do is we take the furthermost right card on both rows and we put them on the left side. So the seal puff now goes over here. Muskox goes over here. It's now on the cold side, so as you can see, it's going to take a roll of one to be successful. And that's also going to mean that we kind of need to get our trackers back because now it's going to start getting colder and trackers do allow you to hunt one cold side biome as if it were warm, so that's very helpful. Once again, the storms hit and the mariners all get wiped out, so rough. Uh, I kind of was hoping we'd keep them for more than a turn, but once again, all depleted and yet another energy elder uh, requirement here. Well, we look at red and they only have two, <laughs> so they really can pay two, and uh, they could do that, honestly, because Losing the Shaman, losing the Chief, they could potentially lose the Shaman, but it gives you access to domestication. Uh, it's not super important right now, and they already have a lot of things domesticated. So we may do that. We actually may just kill the Shaman. Sorry, Shaman. He doesn't even give us any re-rolls or anything, so that's okay, I think. And we'll keep the Chief, because that's really important, I think, to keep the Chief. So we'll pay one energy for there for that. Yellow... Oh man, yellow needs to do some raiding, I think. Or maybe they want to do some raiding, that might be really good for them. How much, and they, have, they actually have five energy, so they have a fair amount. But again, pain three, and as we know, not a lot of energy up here for the old uh, tableau in the north. And if they don't have a mariner again, then they're not gonna be able to go to the south. And uh, who's first on this card? Green is first on this card, so they'll go last. So that's maybe not so good for the old the yellows. So they may want to keep their options open. Do they want to get rid of their shaman? It lets them reroll threes. And their daughter only lets them reroll fours. So yeah. <laughs> Although again, actually there's none of those kind of things on the board. So I think that's actually really smart for them too. They're gonna let their shaman die. They're gonna keep the war chief because he allows raiding. So that means they gotta pay two energy for their elder upkeep. And then the green, and once again, they have a fair amount of unassigned hunters. They are going first this turn. They may want to split their forces. They may not want to sacrifice so much, and they still have a fair colony on Markland. So I think they're going to pay the energy cost for these guys, because they actually have a, a good energy thing going. So I think they're going to do that and take the chance of actually losing half their energy store. That's pretty good, because they were topped off anyway. Okay. Uh, this one is not auctionable, so that is the entire event. So now we do player order. Um, green has a war chief, so they could decide to make someone else go first, and they could choose, but I think because, um, again, they don't have a mariner, and it's... Um, they do have the Markland colony, but I think they'd rather just go first to kind of put the screws on the yellow. I think that's really smart for them to do that and actually dictate the, the place of battle. One thing they could do is divert their forces between the technology and the ring seal pup because ring seal pup does give you uh, energy, which is nice. And it's relatively easy to get, right? It'd be super easy. <clears throat> then there's also the polar bear that offers two and an ivory and can be a trophy, although we're kind of running out of cards in the north. So I think what green's going to do is they're going to split their forces here and they're going to actually try to deny yellow any kind of ability to get more energy, to put more pressure on them. So I think what they're going to do is they're going to take, yeah, they're going to take three guys. How many does yellow have? Yellow has a sizable amount. So if I do four and four, what would they all have? Yeah, they could, they could do damage to us, I guess. This could be kind of risky. Maybe we should just group together on the one card because of the fact that the yellow are still fairly powerful. Maybe we could just starve them out any other way. So... <clears throat> 
one of the reasons we might go for this invention is because if we take it into our hand, then we could um, replace it with another card from here because uh, you can replace cards in the, tab in the biome tableaus in Northern and Southern Greenland. If you take it into your hand, it doesn't go directly into play like trophies, for example, right? That's why we have gaps here. Hmm. Oh yeah, there's also the ox. I shouldn't forget the cold sides over there too. We can only do the northern part, but not looking too good. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we still need to get a literacy because we only we do have an artisan, but man, we need to get some literacy going or else we're going to be hurting. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to bring two hunters and put them onto the technology cube. And the rest of these guys are going to come. They're going to go hunt the ring seal. And mainly because eh, it might be smarter to go there, but I'd rather see Yellow try to like take that on um, and get killed, hopefully, in the process and not roll triples, right? <laughs> Although they possibly could get an ivory out of it, which would be kind of rough because we don't have any ivory, and Green probably does need some, but everybody else just has one as well. That's kind of a risk, but I'm also trying to keep them from getting energy and hopefully they just kind of get um, starved out, right? Even though they do have cubes down in Vinland, but not too many and the, and the attrition is quite high and they need two successes, not easy to come by. Yes, I think we will do that. I'm kind of wondering if I should go for that, but I think I'm not going to. I think I'm just going to do this. And we got the colony there, which we're obviously going to use as well. Okay, so that's all of Green's forces. Oh, wait, but should I be raiding? I should be thinking about Sabine raids. But we're going first, so it's going to be very difficult for us to pull that off and not have retaliatory uh, hunters placed, right? Second player, Norse. Well, the Norse now have a sled. That means they're not really dependent on their mariner necessarily being there, so they can go up to the north if they want to and hunt the polar bear or grab that technology if they wanted to. There's not a ton of fishing. The shark is a fishing one. Cliffs, I guess. Yeah. Hmm. All not like terribly important, but there is that cold forging process, which I think we should try to grab. Ooh, yes. I do think we should try to grab that. That would be very good indeed. So I think what we're going to do is we've got our colonists on Vinland. They're going to actually have to fight. What should we go for? Hmm. We have plenty of guys. I'm not worried about getting guys. What I'm worried about now is, is accruing more energy, which hopefully we're going to get in Vinland, but we need more. So that means the bog iron is definitely out. I'm not going to really go compete for the seal. I don't want to promote a mariner elder, because that would cost me one energy right now, and I only have three. <sighs> this is tough. I think what I'm going to do is grab this technology while I can. I think that's going to be the plan. Grab technology... And maybe... Oh, I don't have a war chief, so I can't go raiding. Technology? Maybe I try to go for that polar bear. Maybe Red tries to go for the polar bear. Because nobody else can come to the south. So they can pretty much relatively spend a few troops and spread them out and get things. They don't really need to get a lot of babies. They already get one from here. And if we get, you know, we already have a pretty good amount of cubes for hunters. I'm not too worried about our hunter ability. So I think that's what we'll do. We'll take two guys, and they're going to go through the cold forging process. They're going to try to discover this. We're then going to take all of our other guys, and because the sled lets us get unlimited movement, we're going to go hunt the polar bear. And that's also great because, of course, our dog, our elk hound, lets us reroll threes when we hunt. So that's actually very nice. Okay, now we go to yellow. Mm, yellow's in a tough spot. We're in a tight spot. Uh, they do have guys here at Vinland, but they can't get any more there. And they don't really have a ton of energy either, so again, the idea of promoting another guy to become a mariner, not the most appealing. Oh, that's too bad. They really could use it, though, to try to go for that caribou. That would be really helpful for them. That would be really helpful for them, actually, because then they could have a sled. They really need a sled. Ugh. Just not much. Yeah, they're going to be hurting. I think they're going to be having a hard time soon. So what can yellow do? They really can't go anywhere because red and green are crowding them out in the north. They may have to go for the muskox because they have really nothing else to do. Or they can try to fight for this technology, which may also be worth it for them. 
Or do we take the risk and put another Mariner down? I think maybe we have to do that. I think we just don't have very many options, so I think I'm going to spend a token. And we're going to get a Mariner. I guess we have a War Chief. We could go raiding. I didn't realize we had a War Chief, so do I even want to do that? Because I could just go raid a Green Daughter. Ooh, that's a better idea. That's what I do. Keep the Mariner. Take back the energy. That's a much smarter idea. Since we're going last, we're going to go raid some daughters. And I think what we're going to try to do is raid the one that lets us get free Elder Promotion. That one will be good, too. Should we just try to do that? And hope our Vinland rolls actually go well? Or should we try to contest the technology, which would be kind of helpful? Green's already getting pretty powerful. But if we can marry these daughters, that actually would be really helpful, too. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take three guys. And we are going to go try to get the... We're going to do a Sabine raid here. We don't need a Mariner to do that because both the Tunit and the Tool have the same homeland, so it's considered to be like that they're attacking a northern Greenland spot, right? Okay. So he's going to go there and put three guys there, and we're going to try to get that uh, marriage to happen. We're going to take these guys, and they're going to go contest the technology. We're going to try to maybe stock or take out some green while we can. We also get to do that because we also have the most iron, so we can actually um, strike first there. Okay, so now we resolve things by turn order. It's gonna go, green's gonna go first. I guess we'll go to this battle, because we have to battle there. And green cannot attack because they don't have the most iron, so yellow is gonna go first. We're gonna roll four dice. That is considered a war party because uh, we do have a war chief, right? Because that's, because be, okay, so here's the thing. When you attack on a card, its biome changes to a raiding biome. And when you have a raiding biome, then you get the raiding rules, which says that you can get a um, essentially a one or a two equals a hit on the warm side if you have your alpha with you. So we rolled four dice there. We rolled two twos. So we get to choose two cubes to kill, and we kill the two green ones. Shh, see ya. Oh. Sort of sucks for green. They already had a lot of cubes, so it's not terrible, I guess. Okay, I guess we'll go for this ring and seal. We pretty much are guaranteed to get that. No one's going to challenge that because the alpha automatically wins, and we don't have to do... We can't roll it for trophies or anything, so we automatically get a baby, get that one guy back, and an energy. Okay, green, and an energy, okay. And we bring these guys back. We look at Vinland here. We have, what, five guys? So, five dice... Oh yeah, a lot easily succeeded. But threes and sixes kill us, and we rolled one three. So we lose a guy, but we immediately get him back because the reward is one colonist and four energy. So once again, we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We gotta really challenge Mark One's ability to do that. I think that's gonna be one priority maybe for the tool. I mean, maybe we should have gone there instead of Vinland. Um, okay, so that was Green's roll. Next one up is red. So red has this cold forging process. We'll try to do that real quick. See if we can get that to succeed. We do, yay. All right, so they get the cold forging process as an idea. So we're gonna hold on to that and replace the card in the tableau. Now I have a hooded seal, so that's great because it provides energy. That's very good for us. We need that very badly. Um, let's go ahead and do this one. So we have one success already, and we're going to roll one, two, three, four, five dice. I get to re-roll. Let's take a remember some of our abilities here. The Norse don't really get a lot from their uh, people, and plus we have, like, no elders. <laughs> and their daughters don't really give them it except for the re-rolls on threes, right? That's kind of nice. But we also get re-rolls of threes here. I guess I've been forgetting that, that we get re-rolls of threes. Because that technically counts for the new world. It is a metallurgical site. Anyway, let's try to remember that. Sometimes you forget those. It can be very easy. We do have our dogs, though, and they let us reroll threes on land hunting biomes, which the polar bear is. So we're going to roll five dice, so we're rolling threes. So we have successes, and we might as well reroll this three, because we don't have a triples or anything else. So let me go ahead and take that out. Uh, and uh, it's the five doesn't hurt, we can't re-roll it, so we roll this, and we roll a six, and that's nothing, so. We didn't get triples, 
but we did get success on that. So we get two uh, babies and an ivory. That's pretty nice, actually. All right, see, domesticating those elk hounds has already paid off. Getting an ivory is actually really nice. It's hard to do that in this game to get ivory. So all the red guys come back. And then we do this battle here. So we're tied. Yellow and red both have three iron, as you can see there. Sorry, I'm going to pan out a little wider. There we go, both three iron. So then in that case, in ties, you go in player order, which means red will go first. They have five dice. They have to roll ones to hit because they don't have an alpha with them. So we got five dice. No ones, so they miss. The three guys that are there, the three yellows, the tools, retaliate. And they also do not hit anything. Okay. That means we can hunt now in Vinland. And we need to roll five dice, looking for two successes and twos, threes, and sixes kill us. But if we remember, we get to re-roll threes. Okay, five dice. What did we re-roll? Oh, threes. Dang. That's no good. <laughs> so we got a six. Uh, was it a two, three, and a six? Yeah, two threes and sixes kill you. It's actually just one death. It's not bad, but not. we didn't get the two successes we needed. So we lose a guy off the old colony, and... Uh, it could not be flipped back to peaceful because there's more than six still, so there we go. Actually, I guess it could be, but it would just auto-flip back, and that seems stupid to do that. Okay. All right, and so that was all of red. Now we do yellow. Yellow in here is going to try... Well, I guess we'll just roll here. Do they want to try to roll in Vinland? Yes, I think they do. They are going to have to. They're really hoping, beyond all hope, they'll actually get to pull this off. They don't get any rerolls on metallurgical stuff. Oh, they don't have their sage, or they could have. So yeah, that's one disappointing thing about not having the sage. Okay, three dice. <gasps> two successes! We did it! And two threes and fours kill us. So a two and a four takes two of us out, but we get two back for the reward, so that's a net you know, zero sum there. But we got two energy and an iron. Wow, that was a really low odd success roll. Nice. That's gonna help yellow. They really need some any all the help they can get. So now they have a surplus of iron compared to everybody, which is gonna help them, because they could always use that to negate losses. Okay, and that was that one. So that's great. Let's see if we get this technology. We actually automatically do, don't we? No, we don't, because they have to roll. I forgot. No, no, technically we don't, because that is not a... Um, Metallurgical biome is actually a fishing biome, so it does automatically win. So we didn't even have to roll for that. So we can take this into our hand. So yellow succeeds and comes back. Yay. We take the uh, seal scratcher and what's that? The Kakovic fish spear. Nice. And uh, we'll just put that guy down here. I know it's getting kind of crowded, but we'll put that right there. And that represents an idea. And of course, we get a new card. Oh, the little lock, that's not that helpful. Just one of those, already kind of had some of those out, that's not that great. Okay, but that's fine. So now we move on to domestic animal phase. The elk hounds don't need to be fed, neither do the settlement goats, and they yield uh, just one baby here, right? So red gets yet another baby. So now they have a little too many. We're kind of getting to the point where we're having too many unassigned hunters and we could easily be decimated, so we need to start this is the conundrum. We need to either ship dudes off to the colonies, um, or we need to assign them as elders. We really need to get rid of the surplus population. This is kind of hurting us. Um, okay, no one else has any animals? No. So we're good. Oh, I forgot the Sabine raid. Oh, of course. Let's resolve the Sabine raid. That's actually pretty easy to do, right? And that would have been sad if I'd have forgotten that. Okay, so we're attacking. It is a raid spot. These are special raids ones. We need a one or a three with three is killing us. Damn, we didn't get it at all, so. Again, not successful in the raid. Okay. And they go back there. So that is finally everything. Yes, because colonists remain. Okay. And we fed the animals, and now we can do elder actions, which is when we're going to be making these tools. So the green, red, and then yellow gets to go. Green um, has no tools. Oh, I forgot. They had that. The green didn't... 
They weren't on a metallurgical site, were they? Oh, they were. They were up for, um, I totally forgot about that. That makes them really useful. That means they don't really die up here. Huh, interesting. They succeeded anyway, so that wasn't a problem. Totally forgot about that. Nice. Gonna have to remember that. We're gonna actually gonna put that down here so I don't forget it. I think that's something I'm being silly about. I should just put it right here by the narwhal because we only need to keep the narwhal trophy value present. Okay. Who else has ideas? Next will be up the red player, and they have this cold forge process. So to discover it, I need to discard an iron, which I do have. So I will do that. And now we've made a tool. The cold forge process, which lets us automatically convert fours to ones on uh, metallurgical sites. Very handy in the new world, obviously, just kind of like that imported hammer um, that they have. It lets them turn threes into ones, which is very nice. This one lets you turn uh, fours into ones. And it's worth three points, which is very nice. Okay, so we built that. And then we also, on this team, they need to spend an iron if they want to make it. Oh, they don't have a sage. Oh, I totally forgot. Oh, I totally forgot they need a sage to build that. Oops, okay. That's not terrible. It's not terrible. Because they still have an innate hand size of one, thanks to Papili. Just like these guys have an innate hand size of two. These guys would have an innate hand size of zero if they didn't have a, a shaman. So that's why I'm always, I need to be thinking about getting them married off. Okay. So that was all the elder actions. We can't build that. That's really funny and unfortunate that happened that way, but yeah, that's how it goes. Okay, so let's take a look at the greater board. Here at the end of turn three, you can see red has quite a lot of population, not a lot of energy. Again, still kind of struggling on that front. Yellow is doing pretty good. Actually, um, might have an ability to strike forward if they can somehow get a mariner and start moving on to different colonies. I think it's going to help them out. And then green clearly is in a really good position because no one's challenging their position in Marklin and they're just cleaning up on energy there. And it's keeping them in the game because these elder die-offs are not really that, that uh, bad for them because they could easily replenish them. Although they haven't really added a bunch on the hunters. They might need to think about that too. And this hammer health, so we got to think about that. Who's in the lead? I guess based on victory points... Technically, it would be not you guys. You have three. Well, I guess it's a tie between here, between the Tool and the uh, Norse. Oh, no, it's a three-way tie. Everybody has three. Three, three, and now with that, they have three. So that was actually a good move there for the Norse to tie it up. Okay, that's the end of turn three. When we come back, turn four of Greenland.